Hey guys, so today's video, we're going to talk about um, bedside manner, um, meaning like how a practitioner or a doctor um, interacts with a patient or a client while at an appointment. Um, bedside manner came up on my radar recently because I recently went to an appointment with a PCP and like she just wasn't listening and wasn't hearing me um which i mean i know that a lot of the doctors are in and out of the rooms really quickly because they're bogged down by like paperwork and stuff um and i've read a lot about bedside manner in the past so i wasn't really surprised by the interaction but then, then it just reminded me of bedside manner that i experienced myself before i became a reiki practitioner um and let's see, before I got into energy healing, I was a person with chronic pain. Um, I had had two hip surgeries, a torn rotator cuff, a pylonidal abscess, um, carpal tunnel, tubular tunnel, like I had a lot of stuff going on with my body. And that was when I was a very disempowered empath as well. So a lot of the stuff was me just not understanding like the emotions and energy kind of getting stuck in my body that weren't always mine. Anyway, so, um, when I went in for my first hip that went out on me, um, I remember that the doctor had been waiting to see for like three months because every brick and orthopedic place has a huge wait list. He was super rude and he um, looked at me and told me, you're too young to have hip surgery, take Tylenol. And I remember I was like in tears because I'd been waiting for this appointment for like three months and I was in a lot of pain and anybody that's had problems with their hips understands like how debilitating it can be. So then I talked to the front office and they allowed me to be referred to another surgeon, which they don't normally do, but they did. So then that surgeon was nice and accepted me. Um, he did my first surgery and that was fine, but then I needed a second surgery on the other hip. And I had a really bad flare up after my second surgery. From a lot of emotional stress. Um, well, I realize that now looking back at the time, I didn't realize what it was. Um, and I was like in tears when I went to visit the surgeon for the follow up. And as I was like crying there, swollen with like ice packs, um, he's like, Well, I don't really know what to tell you because I gave up doing hip surgeries because they're so discouraging. And like, again, like horrible bedside manner. Like, I get these people are human, but it's just like you're also working on humans, you know, delivery goes a long way. And then with this recent PCP um, visit, like um, I was there because I was having issues with my menstrual cycle and I already figured she wouldn't really have an answer for me because there's not a lot of scientific research on stuff, but I figured I would just go to like cover all my bases and be responsible. And so she confirmed what I had already thought and um, I was like, well, you know, it's kind of interesting. Like they say like in Chinese medicine during your period, like the period is your winter week and then you have like the spring week after the period, summer and then fall. And then she was like, oh, I'm still listening, tell me more. Which I knew she wasn't listening. It's probably how she was like not engaging, not asking questions. She was a doctor, she knew it all. Um, and she did like the rest of her checkup on me and didn't ask me a single question about what I shared with her and didn't like really like give me options or insight. And then it was really frustrating because I also did blood work. So I was like, well, maybe I should get my thyroid checked also because um, thyroid can impact hormones, you know? So the blood work paper that they sent in, I don't know if any of you have received blood work paperwork before, but it's usually a bunch of like letters that stand for like blood platelet count, white blood cell count, body da da and they abbreviated it all and then as numbers. And then the paper she sent me said that everything looked fine and then gave a list of everything. But if I would like further clarity and clarification on the results to go ahead and set an appointment up, which really this like amounts to like the doctor wanting me to set up another appointment so that way they could build insurance for explaining to me my lab work. However, being how I was treated with my hip surgeries, I, um, learn to be my own advocate, which that's part of the reason of this video is it's to encourage you to be your own advocate for your health. 
whatever route you go, whether it be Western medicine, Eastern medicine, holistic, a bit of both, it doesn't matter, but be your own advocate. Um, so then I started doing like the Googling to see what each little abbreviation meant. And then I figured out what was going on with the blood work. Um, however, that letter with the lab work also illustrates like another thing that I want to talk about in this video, which is how people give their power away to doctors um, or to people of authority. Um, and it's like, it said, according to what she knew that everything was okay. So basically saying I should trust what she said, um, which was fine. However, I do realize one of my lab work things was really close to anemic, but it wasn't quite there, but she said everything was in a healthy range, which technically was in a healthy range, but it's like a little close to anemia. Um, however, being my own advocate, I was able to figure that out for myself, you know? Um, so then carrying that over into where I am now, I got into energy healing because I was in a lot of pain and stuff. And um, anybody that's been in a ton of pain knows like you'll pretty much do anything when you're in pain to be out of pain. So then I got into like the woo-woo, esoteric, healing arts, whatever you want to call it. Um, and even there, that say manner is important, which is why I'm talking about this also because I'm a healing arts practitioner based off of my own journey and transformation. Um, and I'm not going to say all healing arts practitioners are perfect and make this a battle of Western and Eastern or Western and we will, um, because at the end of the day, all of us are human. So um, a few examples of poor, like hmm, bedside manner or poor uh, or misuse of authority. Um, with the woo-woo or esoteric that I did work with in the beginning stages um, would be my own Reiki teacher. Um, she basically um, acted and implied like she would be a really helpful teacher and she like made it look like she knew a lot, but then she ghosted her students after the third class, after she got like the most amount of money out of us, which was like highly, highly, highly unprofessional. And I mean, it left the students feeling powerless because she was our teacher. Um, and then like not in the case of like misuse of authority, but um, I remember one time there was another practitioner that I worked with um, very beginning stages of my energy healing. And at that time I thought I was under entity attack and I was super paranoid and scared and fearful and like I hadn't slept in days and like it was just a really terrifying not enjoyable time in my life. So I worked with this lady because I thought she would be able to help me um, clear the entities and stuff that I was working with. Um, however, she told me, I mean, it's fine what she told me, but it was like her tone and delivery. She was just like, you know, I don't think we're a vibrational match. You need to look elsewhere. I won't charge you for the 15 minutes of my time that I gave you. And that was it. And I was just like, still scared, still paranoid, um, not sure what to do. And yeah, she kind of left me to fend for myself, which is kind of like the equivalent of what my hip surgeon did, where he's like, oh, I gave up hip surgeries, don't know what to tell you. It's like, um, but like delivery is just like so important because like you're working with human beings, you're working with people that have feelings, you're working with a lot of people that are if they're experiencing pain or distress, they're probably not in their seat of power. They're probably not coming from a place of power. And they're probably needing love and compassion to help them reclaim the power. And when you deliver in a horrible way, like it's just damaging. Um, but then on the other side of it, it's like I've also had um, some people that had great delivery to me not in the Western sense, but in the esoteric sense, I had a couple of different um, mediums and healers uh, point out gently to me how I would misuse words or I would use very disempowering words and I was really harsh on myself and stuff like that, which that's how it should be in the healing arts it, and in any, like, and when I say healing arts too, like, I mean, yes, I'm talking about energy healing, but even Western medicine is healing. But that's how it should be with healing. Like you should empower your patients, you know, or your clients. And so 
these people pointed out like how I was being disempowering and using like negative thoughts and negative narratives and some of these people were psychotherapists that did Reiki healing. Some of these people were mediums. Some of these people were healers. Um, first, first person that ever did psychic surgery on me was amazing and sent me away with so many references and reading material, which really helped me get my foot pulled in the door regarding like the esoteric and woo-woo world. And like any person that you're going to for healing, you should always leave feeling encouraged and not discouraged. And even if discouraging things come up in the appointment or session, like there should be a balance where there should still be some type of encouragement or like uplifting feeling that you get leaving there, in my opinion. Which um, going into opinions and kind of shifting this more into like healing arts practitioners and stuff. Um, if you choose to work with a healing arts pr practitioner, or if you are a healing arts practitioner, take what resonates from this video, I'll kind of go back and forth between myself being a client and myself being a practitioner. Um, as a practitioner, it's really, really important to act from a place of authenticity in the heart and not to um, act from a place of ego. Um, which even in my beginning stages, like I get it, like when you're learning all this stuff, it's so exciting. And then you just want to share the knowledge with everybody, but sometimes doing so like, that's totally like coming from the ego and it can be a little bit damaging. Like someone might be telling you about like their, I don't know, Crohn's disease or IBS or, um, let's see, arthritis or something. And you're like, oh my God, that ties into this chakra and blah, blah, blah. And you go into chakras and these people have no idea what you're talking about because maybe they just came to you because they're at that desperate place of pain, you know? So it's like, you got to take yourself out of the ego and realize these people are kind of like you in the beginning of your journey. And you have to guide them the way you wish you were guided because I realized that a lot of practitioners um, tend to not have the strongest guidance in the physical and yeah we can talk about spirit guides all we want but it's like we're also here in the physical like let's talk about physical guidance you know and a lot of um healing arts mentors gurus practitioners whatever like they like to leave things very ambiguous which i get it it's to figure things out for yourself but that can be done in a more gentle way that benefits the newbie practitioner so then the newbie practitioner can actually help the clients they want to work with and help themselves um so yeah, just check yourself and make sure like, am I coming from a heart space or am I coming from like the ego space? Like, and it's fine if you do come from an ego space, just recognize it and work on it. Um, and like with that said, it's like, it's important to listen and not dismiss your clients. Um, the art of listening is real and it falls under the umbrella of the art of communication. And you have to use your discernment and yeah, your intuition might tell you some things about this person before they even say it. But the thing is, they might not be ready to acknowledge those things or maybe it's like an unconscious pattern you're picking up on that they're not ready to base yet. So don't just blurt things out. Um, if they ask you like for insight or if they ask you like your opinion, um, you can do that. Or like another thing like you can do, um, I like to explain to my clients like, well, according to my belief system, this symbolizes this, this symbolizes that, and here's some ways you can work with that to take what resonates, you know, like I give them power, I give them choices and options to make because um, I want people to heal and it's more healing to make yourself as equals and to let them like let them think about like what their belief systems a lot of people don't think about their belief system so let them kind of sit on what you're saying maybe it's like brand new to them and they're open to it but you gotta give them time to like sit with it and maybe they're not open to it and that's fine but the other thing is that's great about talking belief systems is then um the client can decide if they want to work with you or not um after all, they need what's in alignment with them. You might not always be in alignment with people and that's okay. And it's not all about making money. Like if you're really doing this for the right reason, it's about helping people. Um, so kind of giving belief statement, like disclaimers or like leading with belief statements, like that kind of helps people 
understand who they're working with and if that person works in their belief system or not or how they can work it into their belief system and how they can shift and um yeah so and then uh, of course it's important to listen like if a person's telling you about like something that's physically wrong with them like listen like when did it start how did it start what does it feel like to them um how does it inhibit them how does it like take away from their life how does it enrich their life um if you're into mind body work like i am like what emotions come to mind for them when they think of this like ailment or injury in their body or whatever it may be that they're talking about and try to like ask every single question you can which for me it's really easy easy to listen and ask questions because i was a journalism major and i am a writer and i'm an aquarius we're all about humanity and um we're all about listening and being a revolutionary which is a huge part of like revolutionary work is being able to understand what the people need um so i mean for me it, it's easy or I think to listen than for some others. Um, I was trained in who, what, when, where, why. And I don't mind asking questions because I want to get, as they call it in journalism, the most attainable version of the truth to help this person come back to themselves, to help them relax, to help them enjoy life. Like that's what I'm there for. Um, so yeah, make sure you're listening and not being dismissive. And maybe they're being dismissive of something you're picking up in your intuition about them. And that's fine if they're dismissive because they're not there yet. Like you're there as a practitioner, you're there because you have a service to offer them and they want to work with you. So don't push them away um, with your own dismissiveness, but then don't let your ego get in the way and shut them down because they're dismissing you. Like, listen to yourself as well and listen to your inner guidance um let's see and yeah like in sessions you can ask that like when you're asking questions like you can ask some questions that will help them think about the past or the future and these questions kind of give them a choice to like rewrite narratives and stuff in their minds and to help them start to establish healthy neural pathways and stuff and it helps illuminate that they have free will and they can be in their power and they can make these decisions. And um, so it's really important to illuminate. Um, and I also think this is important to illuminate and to give people choices and options, like, because um, to me, I believe that a lot of patients feel very powerless here in the West, um, especially in Western medicine. Like, they go to the doctor and they expect the pharmaceuticals to help them. And like, I mean, I work at a halfway house. Like a lot of the guys are on a lot of meds and they trust that the doctors are adjusting their meds according to their needs. And it's fine, like these guys do need meds. I'm not anti-meds. Like I remember a long time ago, a wonderful medium that had great bedside delivery when I was debating about being on antidepressants or not, she had told me whatever, spirit, whatever spiritual thing is meant to happen can happen regardless of medication. Like, don't, don't worry about that. Um, so, I mean, these guys, like, it would be nice if they weren't on meds, but like, I understand their need to be on medication. And so anyways, I always hear about them complaining about how the doctor upped the dosage or brought down the dosage or how like they're feeling worse in some ways and the doctor's not hearing them, but they're trusting the doctor because they have no choice but to trust the doctor, you know? And these guys really in a sense don't have choice because like they're in halfway house and they kind of do what their POs and stuff say regarding like everything. Like they don't really have choice over their bodies. It's sad in a way. Well, in a way it is sad. Um, so yeah, a lot of patients feel powerless. I know I felt powerless when I was going through all my stuff. And then anytime I've ever mentioned like, miraculous healing that's occurred for myself or my pet through energy work like to a western daughter doctor most of them have rolled their eyes or dismissed it and didn't even hear me um where most people justify and rationalize how it works and like that, that's just not the truth in my hologram um i did have one pcp she was pretty cool um a few years back when my next one on birth control made me really, really sick. I needed it removed my arms. It was like really messing up my lower back and causing me some really bad bleeding. And um, 
two different psychics that were friends of mine. Neither one knew each other. They both picked up on the next phenomenon as the cause of my backache and everything, which the next phenomenon, if y'all don't know, releases a hormone called relaxin, which relaxes your hips and pelvis to prepare you for childbirth. I've been on it for like six or seven years. I also had hip surgery, like my hips and my lower back and stuff are not pulling back together um, after the surgery and I was in a lot of pain. And then getting that removed, um, really helped my body. Um, and so I remember the PCP that did take me in, she was a new PCP, so she wasn't dated yet. Um, she came from like a Mexican background. So she was super, she was super awesome because, um, when I mentioned how I knew about the next one on, um, and when I mentioned something, oh, that I used pilots or something for colds, like she was super receptive to it. And she's like, um, yeah, home remedies and stuff like the curanderas and curanderos use those all the time. Um, so if it works, it works. She's like, I always encourage my patients to use home remedies or to work with people if they help them feel better, even if there's not always science backing it. Um, so she was really awesome and I wish there was more PCP. And she was great to get out and I felt so much better. Um, so yeah, like, but most, yeah, most Patients do feel powerless. Um, she did not make me feel powerless, but I've had a lot of doctors where I did feel powerless. Um, and um, lastly, like Hollister killing, it's about the whole. So it's like Western has its place, Eastern has its place, the Wu has its place. It's all about coming back together as a whole. And for my love of belief, like we have mind, body, and spirit, and there's different tools to work with each one. Like it might be great to see a doctor or like a nutritionist because your body is having issues. And maybe those issues, well, to me, most likely those issues come from a place of emotion. So then you can work with a psychotherapist and heal the root cause of it. And as you're healing the root cause of it emotionally, you can be eating or exercising or doing what the doctor suggests for your body's physical health, um, like to like strengthen your immune system or work out your muscles, like physical therapy. You can be using those as a synergy. And then it's like, okay, like you're working through all these emotions. Um, and now you need to integrate, like you need to integrate um, what you're working through. You need to integrate those lost, like soul fragments that you're bringing back. Um, or maybe you haven't brought back the soul fragment yet, but there's a soul fragment that's now ready to come back. And so this is then where you go into like the energy healing world and you find a practitioner that can do a soul retrieval for you, or you find a practitioner that does like um, energy balancing so they can help you ground and integrate what's going on. Or maybe like you've been doing a lot of inner child work and therapy and like your stomach is just having it. Like everything's giving you like heartburn or bloating, which is like, solar plexus and heart and so you talk to like a nutritionist or a therapist which is a physical um and come up with a diet that works as you're doing this emotional trick with the um, emotional work with the inner child and then once you feel kind of satisfied with that then jump into the energy world and do like some inner child work with someone or solar plexus balancing or whatever resonates with you soul retrieval um and then that way, it's like a beautiful synergy where all these um, practices and schools of thought come together, helping you be woven back into the whole that you um, are and were born in and expressed as, as a creation of God. Um, we're all beings of love and part of the human experience, I think, is to remember that. Um, so yeah, anywho, I hope this video was helpful to you. Um, I hope that this video inspires you to be confident in being your own advocate for health. Like ask your practitioners questions or if they shut you down, don't feel hopeless. Like there's ways to be your own advocate. Like Google is great. A lot of people make fun of it, but I self-diagnosed my hips before the doctor ever did. And my hips, they say like for hip arthroscopy stuff, usually up to a three-year wait for a diagnosis and I was diagnosed in nine months because of my own research and it takes time like you got to look up pain referral pathways and you can't hold on to everything like hold on to what resonates like what, what's going on in your body you know um 
but yeah, like there's always resources and tools out there. You just have to put that out there. Like, hey, I want to like be my own advocate. Like the universe, bring me the people and references that I need to help me, you know? Um, and then with the practitioners like that are watching, I hope like this video helps you understand the importance of listening, like, and remembering where you came from and remembering like the golden rule, like treat others how you want to be treated. Like you don't want to be dismissed and you don't want people like being know-it-alls to you either. Um, bring that balance and ground into it. And yeah, so anywho, I hope this video helps and thank you for listening. Um, if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. That way you can stay up to date on videos that I upload. Um, and I will be back hopefully sooner than later with the Mercury retrograde Reiki video and possibly um, a relationship technique that Chris and I recently learned for um, releasing things and bringing in things to serve our cycle union. Um, take care and be well. Namaste.